Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pacey Court. I'm Brian Pace, reporting live here at Astor Place here in New York City. Blessing the band stage tonight for the very first time since 14 months of him being in seclusion due to the pandemic is Grammy-nominated pianist, composer, and educator Jason Moran. Now tonight he's performing solo piano for a very, very special presentation presented by Creative Time, celebrating the first National Juneteenth celebration. Tonight, you're gonna to witness Jason playing for the very first time, and he goes all over the gamut of black American music, from jazz, blues, to a little bit of funk, as well as straight ahead and avant-garde. Tonight, I had a chance to sit down with him briefly to talk about how he's been able to strengthen himself as a musician and as a person and as a family man during this pandemic, as well as reflect on some of the things that he's going to be doing musically moving forward. Again, tonight's presentation is presented by Creative Time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy highlights of solo piano by jazz pianist, composer, and educator Jason Moran live here in Astor Place, here on the Pace Report, here in New York City.
this is the first time you've performed since the city and this COVID stuff is. Yeah. How does it feel, man? Uh, it feels refreshing. You know, to be to see you <laughs> and to, and to hear the city. You know what I mean? To hear the city, to hear the people, to hear the music in the city is something that uh, I didn't know. I didn't know I needed it this much, you know, to feel the city again. The city that I love, you know, the city that I make music in. But usually I make music in rooms, so to just be outside, you know, and hear everything, and play everything. Jason, what did these last 14 months do to you mentally, spiritually, and musically? I know that being confined, you know, with your wife and your kids. I know I know y'all got a lot of time together. But I know that I noticed when I saw you tonight, I noticed that there's a little bit of uh you're getting stronger out there. <laughs> I'm trying, that's the that's the hard part. You know, the pandemic kind of makes your muscles contract. You know, and so you, you lose some of some of the intensity I do, you know, in my forearms. But part of what I would have to do is um is, is try to be maintain a practice that like if I got in front of people, then I would feel like I had lost it. Mostly what it did was it allowed me to slow down and, st and, 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 and practice staying safe. You know what I mean? Like stay in the crib, keep my kids safe. Like you know, it's a kid, stay in. And um, I've never done that. Before. You know, I've never been home this much to be with my kids every night for 15 months. Never in my career, you know? So this was also, like, for a lot of people, I'm sure, refocus about what, what, what we need to do after, you know, when we go to the next chapter. And this is very, very ironic because tonight, Happy Father's Day, this is, you know, the weekend of Juneteenth. This is the very first national celebration of Juneteenth, but you're from Texas, yeah. so you knew about Juneteenth. Yeah. Probably. How's this important to you right now? You know, Juneteenth uh, was always a big deal because, uh, you know, for us in, in Texas, it was it was the, it was the day to, to cook out with each other, and also to just and to and to, and to consciously claim freedom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even if you knew that once he left there, the shit would be fucked up. But like that you could consciously say, no, I'm gathering up together with my family again to, to talk about what it feels to, to move forward. And um, and so in Houston, there was always a big blues festival and barbecue, right? So for me, it's always that, you know? Uh, so to feel the rest of the country now try to understand chapters of American history is deep. You know, and it's gonna take a long time for us to figure out how we how we how we do that too, you know. This is the first, you know. Like it's crazy, Jason, you say that because when I saw you on the band stage tonight when you were playing, I saw Cecil Taylor, I saw Andrew Hill, I saw James P. Johnson, I saw the blues. This is what this country is all about, about being us. Moving forward now, how are you going to showcase not only your music and your art, but also expressing some of the atrocities that continue to keep plaguing black America? Yeah, well, you know, the, the music is a bomb, right? So I have to keep using it as that. You know what I mean? Most important, I have to keep it sewn into me so that then I can be, turn around and then share it with somebody else. So it still serves that way for me. You know, black music always does. Yeah, but also, you know, like the music is, uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a rainbow. You know, it's not, it's not all starting from the same place. You know what I mean? It's not all starting from oppression. You know, how dare we try to frame our whole existence around, you know, the last 400 years? When really, we are much older people. You know, before that. You know, but how do we step forward? I try to empower younger musicians to do that. I saw that earlier before you started, that young brother. Hi, brother. Take care. Take care. Take care. I saw that earlier when you were speaking with that young brother earlier about the concept of playing. And um, I think that's beautiful. One last thing, I want to ask you to this. Um, was there anything that you 
really got into during this pandemic, new music, new music styles? Was there some things that you, that opened your ears during this whole solitude period of 14 months? You know, if anything, oh yeah. Shit, I didn't even play it tonight, I meant to. <laughs> I got deeper into Toni Morrison. Really? She saved my life, you know what I mean? Like she saved those early months of the pandemic. Because nobody, nobody knew what the fuck they were talking about in the early months. Right. And for Toni Morrison, Texas, they, those books, Beloved, Blues, Jazz, Sula, Jazz, you know, all of them, Song of Solomon, they all became like living for me. It's like, oh no, this is that old truth. It ain't gonna never go out of style. And so Toni Morrison really became that, that thing. So a song I wrote called, uh, Toni Morrison said, Black is a Rainbow, you know? She says that in Beloved. She's like, there's all kinds of black, you know, you know, pitch black is, you know, pitch black, saying something is pitch black is like saying something is green. Green. Green like celery, green like the flower, green like, you know, like green like the stone is about to, the stone, you know, you may as well say black is a rainbow, you know? <laughs> so she, she, she became, you know, like the center and for our house, because I don't talk about it every time. Did you hear what she just said? <laughs> I come running out the road talking about something she wrote because that was what we had to do. These two, I had to read during these during the solitude. That felt necessary. Is there anything special musically that 
people and fans should get ready for since you had all this time? Well, yeah, I'm trying to get the muscle up to to do my James Reese hero project. Do it! Yeah, that's the muscle I'm getting ready for. There's no Duke Ellington. Yeah. There's none of these big band cats without this dude. Yeah, yeah. So that's the next one. Hopefully by the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of the summer we'll be recording. That's the next Why did you decide to pick Europe? You know, James Reese Europe is, I call him the big bang of jazz, you know? But he, um, actually a few years ago I was commissioned in, in England to to write a piece about him. Um, because they were celebrating, well, they were celebrating the Armistice Day, you know, the end of World War One, right? So uh, we, uh, so I, I kind of did this piece, kind of reworking his music, but also just thrusting his name back into the conversation, you know. Um, and so James Reese, um, he's, you know, but he starts it all for us. He, he took it. He he took World War One. He took our culture. And took it to the Europeans. Yeah, took it over there. You know, he was already an activist, you know. He was already thinking about the success of black folks off the stage, you know. Started his own black musician, musicians union, the club club. So he's out here doing that work. So by the end of his life, when he goes to war, World War One, he's already insanely famous. He don't have to do that. But that's how much he was trying to prove to not only himself, but the country about his power, his power. Yeah. Optimism he has for black folks and black music. So, you know, 100 years later, still trying to honor that. do it again for this very special edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at Astor Place as part of Creative Times' very first 
Juneteenth celebration featuring the talents of Jason Moran. For more information on Creative Times upcoming events, please visit him on Instagram. As well as for more information on Jason Moran's upcoming tour dates, please visit him online at jasonmoran.com. People, please like, share, and subscribe to my videos here on YouTube and Vimeo, as well as subscribe to my pages on Instagram as well as Facebook. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.